So this is what our, our four chamber view looks like. So on our image, we've got the left atrium to the right of the image. And conventionally, we want to orientate the probe so that our image has the dorsal and cranial structures to our right when we're, when we're looking at an ultrasound, ultrasound image. So when we're holding our probe, if I've got my back to you and the patient's here, I'll be holding the probe with the thumb. So all ultrasound probes have a reference mark on them, which is usually a groove or maybe a, um, maybe a ridge on them. Use that reference mark and put your thumb on that. That will help guide you as to your, your movements of your wrist and your thumb. With our four-chamber right parasternal long axis view, what we're doing is we're holding our, our thumb on the uh, transducer mark and we're having our thumb pointing slightly towards us, the top of our thumb pointing slightly towards us. The thumb tip and the transducer face are pointing upwards and towards the animal's lumbar spine. And we start off round about the third, fourth intercostal space. A good starting point is to feel where the apex impulse is most intense and start there and point up towards the lumbar spine. One of the things that you'll find you have a tendency to do very often um, when you're starting doing a lot of, lot of echo is to have the transducer too far down towards the sternum. And it's often useful to, to consciously make yourself slide that dorsally within the intercostal spaces. You'll find you'll see a lot more of the, the, the heart in your image. If you're getting images that are very tipped, that are very sort of oblique in orientation, it usually means you're not angling cordally enough. Okay, so imagine the heart sitting like that. If you are imaging like that, you'll get a, an oblique image. You want to turn it around more like that. Okay, so if you've got a tipped, tipped image, you usually need to tip, tip back. And don't be afraid to advance or go back an intercostal space. If the image you're getting, if you, and, and try things sequentially, if you, you're not happy with the, the position of the heart, try sliding up in the intercostal space. If that doesn't work, try moving one forward. If that doesn't work, try moving one back. Try angling, don't, but don't do more than one thing at once when you're doing it, do those sequentially. And you'll soon get a, a, an eye for what manoeuvres help and what don't when you're, when you're doing that. You may find, particularly with bigger dogs, that in order to see the atria and the ventricles, you can't do it all on one sector. And what you might need to do is to angle upwards or dorsally a little bit to bring in the atria to optimise the image for the atria and then conversely bring it back down again to optimise the ventricles and that's very common you're not doing anything wrong if there's a big heart it may be beyond the space of your sector and you might need to just say well actually on this image I'm going to concentrate on the on the atria as you're gaining confidence in doing that why not if you're just looking at the atria why not narrow the sector and just narrow it down to the atria, and then just do the same for the ventricles, and then you'll increase your frame rate by doing it. Remember that, that a, a wide sector decreases frame rate when you're, when you're doing that. So don't be, don't be afraid to do that. If we then turn the probe a little bit clockwise, and it's not a large moon, it's usually about sort of 30 degrees, and what we also tend to need to do is to drop our hand round up towards the patient and often to slide forward a little bit, then we'll get a, a more longitudinal view of the left ventricular outflow. And with that view, we're then seeing the um, aortic valve, the sinus of Valsalva. We see the anterior mitral valve leaflet and its contact with the interventricular septum. We foreshorten the posterior mitral valve leaflet. So this is the anterior mitral valve leaflet, this is the posterior one. And you'll also find that this rounded anechoic structure comes in here. That's the right pulmonary artery that you're seeing in transverse section. Um, it's worth mentioning that on both this view and the uh, four-chamber view, if you're seeing the pulmonary artery, particularly on the four-chamber chamber view, you can compare that with the size. You'll often see um, a pulmonary vein entering into the left, left atrium just adjacent to the septum. 
And you can compare the size of the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary vein, and it gives you some nice hemodynamic information if the, if the pulmonary vein is very, very dilated compared with the artery. This may be a patient with elevated left atrial pressure. Okay. So, very useful view.